Hello and welcome to the channel. My name's Roberto and in this channel we're building up a Street Fighter V4S. You'd know that because you've clicked on a little box in YouTube saying Street Fighter V4S. Um, but you may be one of those cool subscribers that subscribes, comments, shares, likes um, and sort of gets involved in the project. If you are, thank you so much for returning and coming back. This week is going to be very exciting. We've got it's actually a bit of a mismatch of stuff that we're doing to the Street Fighter. Uh, the first thing we are going to be looking at is we're going to go see uh, Lorenzo at uh, Poly Motor Trimming. He's going to be designing a custom seat for the Street Fighter. Um, so the only drama with that is that when me and Lorenzo get together, we talk and discuss and deliberate on colours and finishes and how it should be. And it's a very long, drawn-out process. So... Uh, with the footage, I've had to sort of trim it right down so it's a little bit more sort of manageable and uh, you don't want to blow your brains out by the end of it by seeing two, two guys talking about colours and swatches um, and things like that. So um, anyway, let's go have a look now at um, the seat and Lorenzo at Poly Trimming and um, yeah, and we'll see you guys back very soon. Sort of... Uh, how do you say, artesian, artesian, you know, like you've got all your little tools and stuff, you've got, got the crap everywhere. That's a plant, I don't know. Dead plant. Is that drugs? <laughs> huh? Is that drugs? No, no, it's a plant. Oh, it's a plant. Uh, um, this one's a little bit sort of, not so much different. So that's the stock seat that yep. comes with the Street Fighter mm -hmm. um, V4S. And I purchased the, the um, what is it, the, uh, not the comfort seat, the low sport seat. So that's the low one. So I figured instead of chopping that one up and getting you to retrim that, mm -hmm. I get you to do the stock seat. So then I can make it, because I love the size of that. So sitting on the bike, the Street Fighter, you kind of sit more into it yeah. with that, whereas this you sit very high. Yeah. And obviously me being a short ass. You don't, um, you don't, you don't yeah, I feel comfortable. No, no, yeah, right. no. So How much is it? Like, like 20 mil or something? Wow. Yeah. So I think it's, yeah, it's fairly sort of different. So I want to translate that to that. Yep. But then I want to use this as the sort of like how it's going to be. So what I'm thinking is, because we're doing the 916, I know you've seen only, I think you saw the one on uh, the first episode. Yeah. So you know we're basing the V4S Street Fighter on the 916. Mm -hmm. With the 916, if you look at, say, both bikes, you've got... The tank which is all red mm -hmm. and then the tail section which on the side of it's red then goes to obviously the hump mm -hmm. at the back with the street fighter it's 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 a red tank and the tail separate yep. it's red so i want to join the um the red so i brought a sample of the top mm -hmm. so uh, what i'm thinking is if we make this side all red yep. up to there yep. so then that will join the tank because this sits right on the tank yep. And then that's going to obviously touch with the tail. So then it gives it that illusion of being all red. Um, the only thing I'm thinking as well is that you'll need to probably trim their red because when it goes on, um, you're going to see sort of that going to be black. The bottom edge. Yeah. So I think like that inside there, that all the way down and stop there. So then that's black. So then it's got the little bump stop okay. in there is going to be black. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm thinking. Sometimes we do a top stitch. It can be single or double, but if you don't like to see it, we just do it without it. And it won't need it for strength? You don't need it. Okay, because I'm pretty hard on my bike. I've got, thread, thread I've got a big ass that sort of, it'll so be all right, it won't rip it. I won't split stronger, my pants. Stronger threads. Okay. Stronger than beautiful. Detract the away the from. Seat, the seat, okay. Yeah, I want the seat to sort of you know, blend in like we always do with all our projects, you know, so it's like it's meant to be and it came from the factory yeah. like that. And I know the 916s and stuff like that, they never really had the double stitching and, you they know. Used, they used to have, uh, no, they didn't have any double stitching, no, that's right. Yeah, they just... Flip around, mm. without a top of bound, if you sit on here, definitely you're going to have a bit more issue of... Mm. I normally wear leathers, but when I ride, yeah. How so. do you find the suede with the leather? Do you find it good? good? I don't think I've got any bikes with suede. I don't think. And then I'll come back in a couple of weeks and yeah. and grab it, and we're good to go. Yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much, Lorenzo. Thank you. That's that's fantastic. Again. Always welcome. Um. So Lorenzo Poly Trimming, I'll put up a little thing saying, you know, where he is and all that type of stuff, and a link to his website. So. 
Awesome. Thanks, Thank you. All right. I'll stop this now. Now we'll do the actual what we're going to do because we don't tell people exactly what we're going to do because it's like a surprise. To have a continuity. With yeah. The pattern, right? Yeah. And I know it's never going to be 100% because they're two different substrates, but the closer we can get. Dark. Okay, this is going to be a little bit unorthodox, a bit weird, also very personal, but I've got, uh, I've got nothing to hide. So we're going to look at three different weights, and in front of you is a set of scales. So one is going to be my weight. And then the next two weights are going to be holding something. And then we'll talk about what I'm holding once we get the three weights. So first up is my weight. See if it'll work. So 81.1 kilos. Okay, I'm probably put on a little bit of weight, but it's winter. So it's all right. Okay, the next weight, let's have a look. eighty three point four and the last weight let's see eighty one point five so they're the three weights um, I'm going to reset the camera up and we'll talk about why these three weights mean anything or don't mean anything It may make a little bit more sense now why I was weighing myself. My scales, unfortunately, can't weigh the such small amount. So yes, we're talking about batteries and we're talking about a few reasons why I like to swap out my stock um, lead acid batteries with um, lithium batteries. So just to go back with the, um, the weights that we had, um, to break it down, the weight saving you're getting is just shy of two kilos. It's about 1.9 kilos. Again, these are all approximates. I've stood on a weight, a scale with it. So they're not 100% accurate as you can sort of imagine, but it gives us a good idea or guide of um, the different weight savings. So this is around 2.7 kilos. This is your standard lead acid battery that comes with your Street Fighter uh, V4S. And then this is the anti-gravity lithium battery, which is about 400 grams. You can feel the difference when lifting it, when handling it, you can see this is a lot harder to, ooh, and something just flicked off. This is a lot harder to uh, handle and this is a lot easier and lighter. Now, the uh, main reason besides the weight savings um, that I like to swap out my batteries to um, a lithium ion battery is because of what's actually inside the batteries. So inside the um, standard battery is um, lead acid, sulfuric lead acid. Um, inside the anti-gravity, now obviously technical guys will correct me, but there's little magical ions in there that produce electricity and they bounce around and it's sort of like a sort of transformers like one of their sort of Autobot things that power everything up. So technical guys can obviously correct me on that, but that's what I believe is inside their magical powers. Um, that's why it's so light. Now, besides the weight saving fact, the reason that I swap out my batteries is because of um, an instance that I was a part of about a year, year and a half ago. Um, so picture yourself back, one of my customers, a very good customer, collects a lot of um, sort of coolish bikes. He um, had just finished his project on a Ducati 900SS, one of the last models that they produced. Um, it was a full restoration, beautiful paint, frame, wheels, everything was nice. Um, came to me, we did the full, um, you know, platinum detail, machine polishing, you know, waxing, coating, everything, making the bike look immaculate. Um, he picked the bike up after, I think it would have been like a two, two and a half year build over time. Um, picked the bike up, nice sunny day, took it for a ride, everything was beautiful, um, and that was it. So I thought, you know, customer happy, I've done you know, many bikes for him. Um, a couple of days later, however, I get a phone call uh, from a workshop saying that, um, yeah, there's been a few issues and the, uh, it actually the battery decided to explode the casing and leak out the sulfuric acid that's inside the battery all over the frame, the engine, um, parts of the bodywork, and it pretty much destroyed 
um, the bike's finishes. Mechanically, it's fine, but the finishes of this bike are destroyed and need to be, you know, repaired, repainted, whole nut and bolt, you know, engine out, frame out, that type of scenario. Um, now, the battery was brand new. It's very rare, these occurrences, but it can happen. And uh, yeah, it wasn't a cool thing to be waiting that long for your bike to get it to then have this happen. So um, again, that was about a year and a half ago. I think it's sort of getting towards the end of the rebuild now, again, the second rebuild um, could be another five, six months away. But it got me thinking that um, a lot of the battery placement on bikes um, are sort of in areas where if there was a chance of it leaking, it's going to damage finishes and things like that on your bike, which is going to cost thousands of dollars to repair, even though it's only a small area, which could be like brush touch or something like that. It's not the point. Um, some insurances won't cover things like that. You need to go back to the manufacturer for insurance. Um, it's a very gray area and you sort of leave yourself open to, um, you know, a lot of bad things that could happen potentially. Potentially, it's almost like being struck by lightning. Um, in saying that, but it got me thinking a bit more that a lot of older bikes, say, you know, 2000 to say 2010 or, you know, early 90s bikes that I sort of restore and look after, you could always see frames, engines, areas on the bikes where they've got like these run marks and that's all been caused by leakages from the battery um, and that's the lead acid coming out. So I thought to myself, well, I don't really want to have sort of lead acid, you know, when I'm not there or, you know, away or a weekend or it's charging up or something to leak over parts of my body work and damage it. So I figured, well, hey, lithium ion's better because again, there's all magical neurons in there that supply it. There's no actual liquid that can't leak out. The worst thing it can do is just not work and you replace it. Yes, they are, you know, very expensive. Um, Price-wise, I think they're not quite double the price, but there are, you know, a couple of hundred, 150 uh, more than your standard sort of replacement battery. But to me, that's sort of insurance and it's kind of worth that extra money. Now, for those that don't realize, on the Street Fighter V4S and the Panigale, your battery is actually located on the front of your fuel tank, um, just below uh, this cover. So you've got four screws that you undo. And then on the back, you've got Velcro tabs on the back. So you add a little tab here or um, notches that pop into little um, rubber grommets. So it pops off, then you'll be, um, uh, visible the sort of bracket that holds the battery down in place, take that off, then undo the positive negative and you replace the battery. So when you replace a battery, then you have to reset all your, you know, date time and all that type of stuff. But um, that's the main reason that I swap out the standard lead acid batteries with lithium is purely not for weight saving because yeah, that's great, but you could eat a big meal and still be kind of the same. Um, but it's, it just doesn't have that, you know, um, lead acid in there. So something to think about anyway for yourselves and your own bikes. Okay, I'm doing a mod, but I've got to be really quick about it because I'm actually being a little bit cheeky. I'm actually stealing parts off one of my dear customers and dear longtime friends. Um, I love him to bits, but he left them here too long, so I'm taking them. Um, unless he sees this video and says, oi, you've taken my parts, I want my money, then I'll pay him. You know I'm good for it. Like, seriously, chill, relax. Um, so the mod that I'm doing is actually a pretty cool mod because it flows on to another bike. So it's like hand-me-downs. You know, like you have your brothers and your sisters, probably not your brother and your sister, but if you had like a couple of brothers and you get hand-me-downs and stuff like that. So this is kind of what's happening here. So what I'm actually doing is I'm stealing a set of GPX4 uh, calipers from my dear, dear friend. Um, if he sees it, I'll pay him. So you'd say you watch the, the, you know, the YouTube channel. So this will be a little bit of a test, you know. So I'm going to steal these and I'm going to whack these on the Street Fighter. And then I've taken the calipers off the Street Fighter, which will then mount straight on to the Hyper 950 SP, which are going to be heaps better than the stock calipers that are on there and look also better for the Hyper. So it's one of those mods where I don't know which one I'm more excited about, the Street Fighter or the Hyper, because both things are getting upgraded, which is cool. Um, I had to go and get braided lines made up, um, which was pretty cool because um, it's pretty straightforward. Just had to get right angles, nothing's been cut, shut, whatever. So I can reverse the mod if I need to, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so I've got to be really quick because I don't want him to like catch me halfway through and then, you know, then it'll be awkward. At least if he sees this, he kind of can't do much about it. So, but anyway, shh, just be quiet and we'll quickly get it done. All right, let's, have, let's go do it. 
All right, so I'm not sure how well this is going to work, but here are the pictures, or the video, I should say, of the V4S calipers on the Hyper. Looks so much better. Um, it was a straight bolt-on for the calipers, but the air ducts obviously needed to be um, sort of slotted out to fit properly, uh, but it all works good. Um, we also went titanium um, blade nipple banjo bolts or whatever you call them, uh, which looks pretty cool, so that's awesome. And then more importantly, moving on to the Street Fighter, we've got, here we go, the GPX, which we got all uh, braided brake lines, and then we've got the, obviously the caliper itself. So uh, it's all done that side. And then we're just waiting for uh, one day when uh, wheels and discs come to, um, to do the upgrade on that and sort of make everything work together along with the carbon air ducts as well. All right, so that's that little cheeky mod done. Let's see if he sees it on YouTube and hits me up for his calipers back. Well, unfortunately, it's that time of the episode where we've got to end it and say goodbye. And I know it's, you know, it can be a little bit daunting, a little bit scary, but it's okay. We're going to get through this until next week. So next week, we've got a lot more installed. Um, something finally arrives after 95 effing days. Uh, so we'll go through that next week. Um, also, don't forget those that haven't seen it, we've got that promo that we're doing uh, where you can win a new um, X-Lite 803 RS. Um, just jump on our Facebook page, details will be on the bottom. Uh, decide sort of what project bike we should look at next. We've got two options, so have a look, vote, share, like, subscribe, and it says everything to do in that. And then one lucky person in Australia is going to be uh, getting a brand new X-Lite 803 RS helmet to suit them, um, which is pretty cool. So other than that, if you haven't already subscribed, uh, like, shared the whole lot, please do. Um, so you can stay up to date for the next episode when it comes out. Uh, we're also going to have another feature uh, video posted very soon, um, probably in about, I reckon, three, four days time, um, of a very special bike that we've had the, uh, the honor of uh, protecting, looking after, and getting ready for show to the general public. So um, stay tuned for that one. It won't be in this sort of build series, but it'll be another video that will pop up. So again, thank you so much. Everyone be safe, stay good, and we'll see you very, very soon. All right, thank you.